Hello and welcome back. Uh, Stephen A. Hart here, Director of Content Marketing here at Sands Institute. We are live through today and the, all week long here at RSA Conference 2023. The floor is jam-packed. We are seeing quite a number of people. I am so very excited to introduce our third guest today, uh, a good friend of mine here at Sands, Katie Nichols, certified instructor, superstar herself. I'm gonna blow your <laughs> say all I, the I things want you that to you be don't my hype man say. all the time. Just like follow me around, hype me up. How's it going? Hello, Katie. How you doing? So far, so good. It's a little chaotic, but uh, this is the point in the week where like the energy you feed off of it. Yeah. And then by Thursday, we all just want to take a nap. So let's, let's ride it while we can. <laughs> So listen, uh, you're your host of our monthly SANS threat analysis rundown. You are a superstar at Red Canary. You are a SANS certified instructor. Katie, when do you find time? I need to know where you're getting 25 hours in the day. I mean, I think the key to doing it all is making sure you take time to rest, yes. right? Like people would be very bored with my normal weekend. I just binge watched Beef on Netflix. Um, so I'd like to take walks. Was visiting me this weekend watching B. Right? It's really like if you don't take downtime, you're not going to be successful in any of this other stuff. So, you know, I find when you start doing too much, when you do too many conferences, like I'm going to go home after this weekend, just like sleep for a week, relax, pet my cat, hug my husband. Um, so I think the key is really just saying yes to the things that make you really excited, like chatting with you. I'm like, I love Steven. I'm happy to chat here. Right? So be careful about the things you say yes to and just make sure that they are things that really uh, energize you. I love that you brought that up and self-care is so important, especially in cyber. There's always good conversations about burnout. Yeah. Um, you know, type in a chat right now. What is your favorite go-to self-care uh, tactic? You know, share some tips in the comments on how you handle burnout. Uh, mental health is so very important to me. It's something I speak to quite a bit and I'm happy you brought that up. Yeah. It's important that we take care of ourselves. I have one for RSA in particular. So especially I'm actually an introvert, right? I, lo yes. I love you. I love people, but I get tired. So I always yeah. try to go back to my hotel room for at least an hour or two in the afternoon. Like it's usually like four or five o'clock before the evening stuff starts and just like be alone and be okay with that and yeah. don't have FOMO, yeah. right? Because yeah. if, you, if you go all day, you're just exhausted and then you're not going to enjoy talking to people. And then what's the point if you're just standing here like zoning out? So I always try to do that at conferences. I'm so very extroverted, but I have uh, more and more, I feel like, oh, I get the introverted side of me starts to scream. <laughs> yeah, even extroverts need rest time too, yeah. right? Uh, but, you know, listen, you can tell that we're going to have a talk that doesn't go to script. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I like Manuel's comment there, going outdoors for a hike. Um, yes. Yeah, I do walks all the time. That's a great one, being outside, like, especially if you have a busy day, back-to-back -back Zooms or streams, taking 10 minutes, just go outside. I love that one. I love to go for long walks. I have two dogs, so they get me outside no matter what. Nice. But I find that, you know, I used to get terrible anxiety. Mm -hmm. And you get yourself out on a walk, touch a tree, you bring yourself right back yep. to the present. And it removes the anxiety. Petting animals, actually. My therapist said that actually releases endorphins. And so petting an animal, like that can be a great way to do a mental reset. So super I love important. That. I love that. So listen, you're clearly passionate about a lot of things, but definitely cyber threat intelligence and infosec. So I thought it'd be a good place for us to maybe talk, start our conversation, right? And um, I wanted to ask you, you know, what is uh, what is it that a cyber threat intelligence professional does in a day to day day to day basis? Yeah, it's fascinating because even though it's one field in infosec, like there are a lot of different activities that analysts can do. I mean, a lot of it is tracking threats, right? It sounds yeah. obvious, but trying to track what threat actors are right, targeting what companies, what tactics, techniques, and procedures are they using, um, right? Tracking malware, tracking changes in those. Um, and then the real challenge, though, is disseminating that, right? Intel isn't just for Intel analysts. Yeah. Sometimes we Making kind of use of it. Yeah, we're, we're guilty of that. We write the reports on what we care about, but it's really about disseminating it. Um, that's one of the fun things about cyber threat Intel is it can be for so many different audiences. Um, for incident responders, knowing, hey, there's a specific malware here that we know leads to ransomware. Like, that's important intelligence for them to have um, at the strategic level, right? Hey, what's happening in this region of the world? Should a company expand there, right? If their employees are traveling there, what are the risks? So lots of different outputs. Um, I think what's fun about it is that 
you never know what's going to happen. The cyber threats, like we don't get to choose our day to day, whatever they're doing, that's where we go. Yeah. So is research a big part of what you do? Absolutely. And that's actually, you know, kind of how I got into this. I originally wanted to go into journalism and it didn't really work out, couldn't find a job. And then my husband suggested Intel. And I think there's so many skill sets that are complementary between journalism or researchers. So if anyone, right, is a journalist or has that desire to like dig into things, do analysis, I this think might CTI, be their cup of tea. it's a really fun field. Ah, looking for a pivot as a journalist. Yep. That's something to know about. My friend Selena Larson used to be a journalist. She is an amazing analyst over at Proofpoint. So how do you interface with other parts of the InfoSec team? Yeah, there's so many opportunities. On my team at Red Canary, for example, we do a lot of work with our detection engineers, yeah. right? So the people who are trying to write the analytics to find what adversaries are doing, well, they need to know what those adversaries are doing before they can write the analytics, right? right? So that's a natural one. Um, I know George talked a lot about purple teaming, and yes. I, I think I heard him mention Intel in there, yes. right? If you have people doing purple teaming or red teaming, Again, they want to try to mimic the actual threats that are affecting organizations. Who has that knowledge? It's the Intel team. So mm -hmm. there's so many opportunities to support all kinds of security ops teams. So uh, tomorrow we have a, a pretty big talk coming up. Yeah. Are you excited? I am very excited. Double double keynote panels tomorrow. It's going to be a busy day. Tell so, us more. Tell, yeah. tell everyone Picking watching. Off. I what? actually have them in front of me because okay. it's hard to remember details. Yeah, I, I have the uh, have keynote, the Sans keynote tomorrow at 3.55 p.m. It's on a pack of gum. It is. Y'all, if you're here at RSA, <laughs> can, can we like pick this up at the booth? This is also going to remind me where I need you to be. You got to come so. over to 4416. Booth 4416. All right. If you're here at RSA, Free gum. Come, come get your pack of gum. And then it'll remind you that the- But it uh, reminds me of your keynote. <laughs> keynote panel, Moscone West, 3.55 p.m. tomorrow, Wednesday. Yes. That's not 4 p.m. You're going to miss the beginning, and I'm first out of the five. So this Ooh. panel, if you've never seen it, it's every year. A um, bunch of SANS instructors, we get together, and we talk about the five most dangerous new attack techniques. Um, moderated this year by Ed Scotus. I'm going to be joined by awesome Heather Mahalik, Steve Sims, Johannes Ulrich. Um, and we all get to choose the most dangerous techniques, talk about them, and then most importantly, talk about what organizations can do to try to defend and mitigate against them. So I know you're not going to tell me all the I can't details do that. about it's under tomorrow, lock and yep. but how much has the threat landscape changed from last year to this year? It's interesting. I think that the landscape kind of shifts in slight ways. Um, right. One of the things that was actually a discarded technique I'm not going to talk about is how adversaries have kind of changed up the uh, file types, the attachment types they've had, the emails in response to, for example, Microsoft uh, blocking macros by default in Office mm -hmm. products. Yeah. Right. So adversaries were all in on macros, Excel files, and then Microsoft took that action. They changed to different container files like ISOs. I think I heard George talk about that as well. Um, and so we see adversaries shifting a little bit. But I think what's really important, especially as, you know, this week, everyone's talking about AI to remember that a lot of the fundamental techniques are still the same and still work to try to catch adversaries. Mm. So, again, tomorrow, 3.55 p.m. 3.55 p.m. Sony West, yep. level one. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Katie starts off, so you want to be on time. Yes. Not on <laughs> Caribbean time. If you're <laughs> late, that's okay. Guy. It's recorded, too. You can catch it later. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you do at the Atlantic Council. Yeah, Atlantic Council, I'm a senior non-resident fellow. Um, and it was cool. They reached out to me a couple of years ago, um, especially after I'd done some work with the Ransomware Task Force, public-private uh, work. And, you know, one of the challenges of being in cybersecurity is we can't always make the change we want to make, right? We can help organizations defend themselves, provide threat intel. But there's another component, and that's policymaking, right? Mm. People, national governments, international coalitions, and a lot of those people who are making those policies don't know day to day what security operations people do. And so they reached out to me and they were like, hey, do you want to like chat with people who make policy sometimes? Tell them what cybersecurity people do and see. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. So it's kind of fun. You know, for example, we commented on the, the recent uh, Biden security strategy. Just, you know, hey, what's realistic about that from a practitioner standpoint? Mm. So it's just been fun to kind of try to expand influence and see, you know, can we educate policymakers to make better decisions that help us, you know, not just whack a mole against these adversaries day to day, but really try to have a larger effect. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how you do all these things, Katie. That's you, just, amazing. you just say no more than you say yes. 
That right? too is true. So yes to the fun things. Fun yeah. things. A hundred percent. What else are you looking forward to? Obviously, beyond uh, the keynote, uh, keynotes. What else are you hoping to get out of this week while you're here? I think the big thing is just reconnecting with folks. Um, You know, there are certain people that I see only once a year, right, here at RSA. um, And just hearing what people are up to in the space. Um, You know, just having different conversations with people who have different visibility than I do into this ecosystem. All right, helps me understand, hey, from a cloud security perspective, what is someone who does a product there? What are they seeing for threats? Um, And hoping to catch a couple talks. And I always just look for things that maybe are newer to me, um, ideas that I haven't heard before that might shift the way I think. So those are the big things I'm hoping to get out of it. Nice. So tell everybody about the SANS Threat Analysis Rundown. We kind of touched on it earlier, yeah. but this is the, your, your one time every month where you jump on a live stream yeah. and you drop a lot of gems. It's, it's been a lot How of fun. How did this come about? Yeah. And credit to Steve and Brett, that, that team who kind of backs that up. Um, it's really fun just hopping on every month and just talking about threats. Um, took this month off because of this week. Yes. Well, much. This counts, right? Um, but what I found is a lot of people don't do what threat intel analysts do day to day, which is just watch all this threat reporting. And so, right, the goal of that every month, right, I kind of just give a rundown of what are some of the reports that just came out? What should you be paying attention to? I also try to bring in different guests. Um, I had Scott Roberts who actually walked by here like five minutes ago, um, talk about a really cool tool called Synapse open source tool. So I try to bring in different perspectives, different guests every once in a while to talk about what they're seeing from threats from different tools. Um, so it's been a lot of fun and yeah, we'll, should schedule that later in May. Uh, once we get caught up from this week. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, you know, I, I did not come back to the, the feed, but we have so many people tuned in across social. We got chatter about beaches and dogs. <laughs> and I like, I like that. Let's all go to the beach. Just, just leave the expo floor right now. <laughs> well, Katie, thank you so much. Appreciate you hopping on and chatting with us for a little bit today. It's My ex- pleasure. always exciting to talk with you.